Okay, hey guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here, and today we want to look at the Nikon Z5 and see what the ISO range is. And you're like, Ralph, we know what the ISO range is. We've looked at the instructions and it says 51,200. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's useless, right? Isn't it? Because when you use the camera, you don't want the ISO going all the way up there because the quality of your pictures deteriorates greatly. So tonight's test is to take a photo of my really, really messy kitchen yeah, you'll see in just a sec. And change the ISO range, start on 100, go up in increments, look at them in post, and see where the quality breaks down. Because ISO, sometimes you, you have to shoot on ISO because your other settings can't budge. And so you need to know what your limit is. And on these cameras, you can set the limit of ISO. So if you go into the shooting menu, you've got ISO at sensitivity. You can shoot what it picks out at so that you don't ever have to worry about it so that you can increase the exposure in post rather than it breaking down. Because I've had clients in the past go, uh, photo is just too noisy. Now, boy, noisy and messy, you'll get to see exactly what I mean. And I'm shooting a, a scene that has a lot of foreground, midground, and background. Um, I'm shooting on 50 mils, and I'm going to expose correctly for the shot, and then I'm just going to increase the ISO and decrease the shutter to keep the ISO range um, continuing up as the exposure remains correct. So we're going to start with an f-stop of 11. It's on three seconds and 100 ISO and we're going to stick them all in post and we'll talk about it there. We've thrown these into Lightroom now and I'm speaking to you on my new Maono microphone which seems to really um, be delivering the goods. Pretty happy about that and especially in an echoey room. Now the other things I forgot to tell you was my aperture was set on the sharpest uh, setting for that lens which was f11 so I didn't move my aperture and I put it on manual focus so I didn't change my focus either and we're going to jump in and have a look. Now this is the first one. This is on ISO of 100. Let's just zoom in and as you can see that's really sharp. Looks really clear. So that was 100. Then we jumped to ISO 200 and then we can go 400. I didn't go every single ISO range. Then we go 800 because most cameras can easily operate on an ISO of 800. Then we go to 1600. So now we start to get into interesting territory and have a look. You see on the side of the toaster, all of a sudden it starts to get a bit noisy, a little bit noisy. It's a little bit noisy here, a little bit mushy. Go back to 800, not so mushy. So when I got to 1600, I decided to slow things down a bit in my increments and I jumped to 2000. 2000, you start to see even more noise. But that's a magnification of like 100. It's very close in and that quality at an ISO of 2000 on the Nikon Z Z5, it looks pretty good. All right, let's go to 2500. We're starting to see a little bit here. They're very noisy. Let's just see how noisy they are by jumping back to ISO 1600. Mm, see, 1600, 2500. It is noisier, but it is where the shade happens. So the next range is 3200. And again, it's, it's, it's a little bit noisy and it's a little bit mushy, but the detail's still pretty good. The photo looks great from here. If we just zoom in on increments, see, that's, that's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad. So, so far, I reckon I'd be happy to shoot up to 3,200. The next one is 4,000. Now, if we look at the detail on this, that's the detail of the cloth. Now let's go right back to ISO 800. See, I don't know about you, but there's not a great deal of like extra. That's ISO 800 where you're pretty comfortable. This is ISO 4000. That's not too bad, is it? What do you think? Where would you stop? See, it's starting to break down, isn't it? It's starting to lose some of its sharpness. The colors and the detail, the pixels are starting to merge a little bit together. 
See how you can see the difference between the dark and the light pixels? That's basically noise, so the contrast, the increased contrast. Pixels next to each other create noise and make it look a bit, bit messy. So if you had that picture sent to you, you'd be like, well, it's a rubbish photo, but you'd be like, oh, that's interesting. We've got a family portrait here, but the faces on the family portrait are awful, aren't they? You can't see them at all. So if we go back to, say, 800, yeah, the quality is much better, isn't it? see how the detail just breaks down if we go to iso 100 so that's where we start and that's how noisy it gets let's go all the way 6400 gets bad 8000 all right so the photo there that's terrible it's unrecognizable uh, it's at 8000 and you see all this noise starting to just creep into every element of the photo if I take this big canister, water canister, see we take that and then we go forward to 10,000. Go forward again, 12,800. It's straight off. See, here's my limit. I could never go past 12,800 because if you had any image that looked like this, when you just zoomed in, look, I'm zooming out and you can still see the noise. So if you get any sort of detail, you want to do any sort of cropping, it just breaks down entirely. If we go to 16,000, it just gets worse. Noise is all here when you're looking at 12,800. So 16,000, 20,000, 25,600. You just never shoot this. And it looks good there, and the minute you zoom in, you start to see it everywhere. Yikes. And do you see what I mean? Unless you're going for a really, really grainy shot, you'd never shoot on high, high ISO, because the quality just breaks down considerably. It's a 24 megapixel camera, it does hold a fair bit of quality. Okay, 40,000. It's just a write-off, it's messy, and let's look at our upper limit of 51,200. And I just want to zoom in and just show you how bad that is. You see you lose detail, you lose contrast, it's just awful. And so I think for me, I think 12,800 is my limit. I could handle a photo like that, I couldn't handle a photo like that. What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts and impressions on the Z5's ISO limit. Has this helped you think about whether you would buy it? Or perhaps you're like me and you're like, I just need to know the upper limits of ISO and where I should shoot. And for me, it's 12,800. For you, it might be a bit more or a bit less. Obviously, it's a full frame camera. So you get more out of it than you do a crop sensor or an APS-C. But I hope this has been really helpful. And if it has, please subscribe. Give me the like, thumbs up all that gear, and I'll see you in the next video. Laters. And be some of you that are way smarter than me that it would be screaming like, you're doing the test wrong, but the test for me is how can you push the ISO onto what limit? And so I think for me, I think